Hello guys, this is the third time I'm trying to record an intro. I've been swarmed by mobs. <laughs> They've been jumping from all the all the caves up there. I, I did a poor job with lighting up, I guess, while digging this giant hole, as you saw in the intro of the video. So welcome back to another episode here from the Hermit Craft server and I'm down here in my hole where we use all this redstone stuff I gathered over the past few hours um, to build an epic elevator but uh, yeah we talk about that more in today's episode I've been teasing it for a while and I'm really looking forward to build it and try it out and hopefully we can hammer it out uh, quickly it's a complex uh, redstone build anyways before we get to that of course as it is tradition by now in season 9 and yeah one of my most beloved traditions already shout out to the fan artist of the episode this time dragonheart2497 and not only are there are fan artists there are an artist check out their links in the video description really cool fan art and art in general you know hollow at them maybe you can commission some work for them that would be always appreciated. Um, and yeah, really cool fan out here with the tomatoes. Real life tomato situation is also expanding. Check the Twitters. On Twitter, I released uh, you know, a few days ago, a week ago, so maybe now when you see this video, a quick clip of the garden with all the tomatoes and stuff that is going on. <laughs> so check it out. So thank you so much. Dragonheart249, uh, 2497 sorry um for your amazing fan art um really really cool as you know i just love the fan art is a motivational factor still after all these years <laughs> what is not a uh, motivational factor is this look at this last epi episode you know it did all this effort to create this perfectly flat floor we started to fill it in now i come here there's holes of course i did some investigation if you watch Scar's video, right, you can put one and one together. And then Green's video as well. There's horses back there. Like Pesky Bird and Elf Boy, you know, are using the perimeter here as their personal playground for shenanigans. Blowing holes in the ground, spawning in horses and riders of the apocalypse. I mean, you know, and on top of, the, of all, I mean, if you watch their recent episodes, they were trolling the whole server with fake creeper skins using, you know, our texture packs uh, thingy we have with the pumpkins. They scared me to death. I was over there at my, um, you know, <laughs> uh, shadow block setup, poppy technology, right, trying to go with sand shoveling because people buy sand like mad. All I do is shovel sand these days. It was sold out again, so we have to refill. So, you know, it spooked me, scared me half the day as a creeper. I didn't record uh, at the time, but I can only tell you, um, you know, um, there would be a lot of bleeping on my side of the recording as well, because that scared me to death. So, one thing is for sure, you know, pesky bird and creeper boy, no, creeper boy, I'm saying, yeah, creeper boy, pretty much, no, elf boy, they're on a, on a road to, to no good absolutely no good things happening right and I, I really think they need a chin check and I, I really also think they forgot about one one important detail here don't they know that I'm loco yeah that's the right attitude just chill in the pond a bit <sighs> you know that calms your nerves we always get dragged into things I mean, you know, let them kids play. At some point, we're gonna strike. <laughs> but for now, we have so many things to do, we cannot constantly be get drawn into conflicts. The whole diamond pillar situation already was a huge distraction. Not that I didn't enjoy it, but you know. <laughs> Today, um, huge task at hand. We want to try to build this cool elevator I was teasing about, or, you know, for, for quite some time now. And, yeah, it's a good uh, example uh, of this whole goat thing we got going on on the channel. You know, uh, we got a bunch of new viewers all the time, and here and there, as I read all the comments, uh, or, you know, most of the comments, um, I see people asking, what is Doc uh, and the goat thing? What? Oh, huh? People still don't get it, or some people haven't heard about it. Well, um, GOAT is a short for Grind, Optimize, Automate, 
together. We changed that this season. Last season it was thrive, but we expanded it or improved our mantra to together. And the elevator we want to build today, or pretty much any project you see in yeah, my episodes here, are always goat projects, hive mind. And it's also a word I mention a lot. What is the hive mind he talks about? The hive mind is, uh, you know, a Dozens and dozens and dozens, if not hundreds of people, whole communities um, um, I work with, like the tech community, builders and whatnot, that help me with ideas, designs. Without them, all these crazy things we do, you know, the game-breaking stuff and all this would never be possible. Like one small goat like me, you know, uh, n you cannot do this alone. You need a hive mind behind you. And it just became... Um, kind of a thing and when I say hive mind it refers to a lot of people you know it would have to name dozens and dozens and dozens and you know there's also people that are in the hive mind constantly with them I work on a daily basis and debate and design and do things and then there's others that come in for a specific project and for example here with the elevator we want to build today I need to give massive uh, shout outs to Super Swaggerize and Purple Dragon uh, Nuke both of them you know, our legends when it comes to door building in the uh, Minecraft hardcore, you know, piston door building community. You know, they've been building insanely fast doors, super crazy doors, 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 doors. Uh, really, really insane stuff. Check out both of their links in the video description. Really worth your look. Also, Purple is going to do an in-depth explanation and tutorial video for this elevator here. In case you want to build one of these two in your episode then. Well, <laughs> this invisible elevator. Well, the soon-to-be uh, episode elevator right so those two came together and designed this elevator for me and has some cool features and I can't wait to build this thing now it will be complex and it will definitely require the help of light medica um, and I will also use uh, wool color coding that will definitely uh, make it easier for me to keep an overview and later as well you know when purple uh, puts the video up on his channel at the moment he can't record because he has got sore throat and is a bit uh, sick so uh, maybe the video is out not yet, but soon. Anyways, check out the channel. It will be there soon. And then you can follow the same steps, you know, in his video and know exactly where things are um, because we will use the same color code. Also, I plan, you know, if you go up um, here under the Hall of Goat entrance right there, the elevator will reach up <coughs> all the way to here and we will have um, where the stairs come down right there. This is our diagonal staircase. Right, here's our first floor pretty much. And then we go down, like seven or eight floors. Um, and yeah, and it will, will look super cool. I haven't designed the outside yet. Um, but yeah, when we come up here then, in the Hall of Goats, over here, we will have a viewing area. Here's some, some glass floor or something that we can go up here and actually look inside the elevator, uh, redstone mechanics. So, you know, that's why also the wool color coding because I think that would look really, really cool. So yeah, um, that's the talk um, to the elevator. Enough talk, you need to start somewhere. Yeah, I knew it. <laughs> kind of looking down on it now. Uh, it doesn't look like much, but this took already uh, yeah two hours to build also. Um, it is relatively complicated and you know stacked relatively compactly onto each other also i struggled a little bit with positioning and moved uh, the whole setup twice so i kind of built some things twice but i think now i am in the perfect position with the whole setup so you know right now looking at it there is a lot of stuff that makes no sense to you i suppose <laughs> uh, it doesn't make much sense yet but uh, one thing that definitely makes some sense to some redstone professionals most likely is the part down here let me quickly take a nap it's dark uh, down here here the brown part let's look at it real quick you know, that's actually a red coder uh, that is a way to read information out of a redstone design and then display it and yeah this is the outputs for our red coder and we will have a nice uh, display sitting down here um, a really unique display that will be visible from every floor and yeah, really, really one of the highlights of the elevator. Um, as you can see here, the blue wool, I kind of started building up already a little bit. That is kind of the elevator shaft 
where the elevator will go up and down and sit. You can see right here, so we will have a piston warm uh, driving the whole thing. And uh, here, where you can see those pistons, this is actually one floor level here where the doors will be. So those pistons will open and open the elevator doors. Yeah, but um, it took actually really long to build this right now. I'm not sure if I'll be able to finish the complete redstone um, for this build today because yeah, it's definitely the most complicated thing we made this season when it comes to complex wiring and all of that. But yeah, we are also on another mission and um, we actually need to go to spawn and clean up a little bit. We still have our diamond mess here and I think I will empty my inventory first and then yeah, we had to need to head over to spawn and uh, check some things out there. Man, there is so much going on over at the shopping district already. You know, now people are really showing their skills and building their proper shops here. I mean, look at that thing Ren made. <laughs> I think he sells pumpkins in it. You know, imagine you, you build such an amazing building just to sell pumpkins. I mean, that is absolutely outrageous. Wow, this looks cool. Really cool build style here with it too. Nice, man. Giga Jacks. Jack o' Lantern and Torch Shop opening soon. Alright. Ooh. Ooh, what do my eyes see? Some redstone in the floor. Okay, so um, the shopping experience will also be upgraded with some redstone mechanics. Me likey. That is cool. I wonder what he will do with that entity. <laughs> Still here, Moss Shop. And I think my most favorite shop on the server might have opened up. And it will be a diamond grave for me. And it's also Elf Boy's shop. <sighs> yeah, look at it. Look at it. He knows how to get my diamonds. Oh, redstone blocks. Hoppers. What's the pricing? 16 for 4 diamonds. Bruh. Inflation. What? Already sold out? Pistons? Oh my god, look at the amount of diamonds he made. Oh man, you know. Redstone shops is just good. Oh my god, he's getting rich. I didn't buy that either. Oh wow. What are... 16 for 3 diamonds. Oh my god, he's gonna make bank. Price is definitely raised. Wait, there's an upper floor as well. Look at how cool these elevators look. Oh, mean. Oh, is it not done yet? Upstairs here? Oh, no, it doesn't look like it's done. All right. Bro. <laughs> Scar used this, <laughs> moved this chest monster to here. Oh, man, this floor. Oh, yeah. It's just a nice floor. All these furnaces. The guy is absolutely crazy, man. Whatever he builds is absolutely insane. <laughs> absolutely insane. Every detail in here is insane. This looks so good. <laughs> He's so good. <laughs> oh, but he also gets on my nerves like nobody else with his stupid bow antics, blowing up holes in my perimeter floor. Nah, 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 nah. <sighs> but I will have to buy. Dang it, man. He got me. <laughs> Whoa, yeah, really, this is cool. What a great idea to create kind of this open facade and then have this crazy bone structure or something inside. Wow. A, yeah, it's a bone hand clawing up from the ground. Probably a bone meal farm, right? Skeleton? Wow. No clue who made this, but okay, let me give a guess. I'm guessing maybe Pearlescent Moon. It just feels like one of her builds. Maybe I'm wrong. But let me know in your in the comment section if you know who made this thing. Because this looks absolutely fantastic. Also really cool location here on the hill and all. Wow. Man. Yeah, stuff's happening here over there at spawn. Here's like the zoo area. <laughs> For real. Like animals all over the place. Oh, somebody flying. Is this Keralis? I think Keralis was on too. Yeah, yeah. Maybe Keralis going for a little shopping spree. What 
That's a giant flamingo shop cell. Wait, no, here is Pearl's shop. Now I'm confused. This, th this is Pearl's. And she's also selling bone meal in buckets. <laughs> Wait, who's that amazing bone hand built from then? Hmm. Okay, here's like, what the heck's going on here? There's puffer fish heads. Yeah, this, this, this says Pearl all over. Okay, random goods. All right, tridents. Oh, bees nests. Oh, oh, okay, and some greeneries and stuff. It's like a cool warehouse with all kinds of cool stuff. Man, you know, we need to do a full episode exploring all the shops. Now, I'm slowly but surely finding out that, yeah, there's so much stuff already on sale. I've been grinding out for hours. We should, you know, make use of our diamond riches we have there and more. <laughs> Technically, we could still, you know, leave this pillar up forever. Oh, okay, it just updated. Bobby hit, Bobby just updated that this pillar was gone. But yeah, technically we could leave our pillar up forever and still afford anything we want on the server. <laughs> We're still so loaded. Okay, yeah, Pearl cleaned hers up, I think. This is Scars and Green uh, when they combine powers. And this is our pillar here. So I guess, yeah, I start cleaning up a little bit and get on my diamonds. We might need to spend them. Oh, man. Alright, that looks already way cleaner. I decided to leave the balloons up, you know, a quick memento here or a small memento to what happened. The diamond pillar war, eventually, you know, all the pillars will be gone. And then, you know, we have the balloons here and uh, no, here is where, where it went down. <laughs> we got a few building blocks out of that, um, pretty cool. And uh, yeah, heading back to the perimeter. Let's do some more grinding on the elevator. Goat have mercy. <laughs> oh man, this is an insane build. I'm at it for about 10 hours by now, build time for this thing, and I'm maybe two thirds done with the redstone wiring. I'm trying to work with the color coding um, and it's a partial success, but still, it is extremely tedious. I have to go back and forth because all of the different wool colors and then all kinds of redstone components. So this is definitely a very advanced redstone build. But I think with a proper block-to-block -block tutorial, it's definitely doable in a reasonable amount of time, not like I'm here <laughs> trying to do it. Wow. Yeah, definitely, absolutely insane. I've put a huge amount of materials into it already as well. My Schalke boxes are draining, which is kind of a good sign. But yeah, just uh, to give you a bit of an overview what we got going on here. So, <laughs> why? <laughs> you know, if you, if you redstone so long, you only see red dots in blocks anymore. It is nuts. Ah, yeah, somebody's sleeping. That is great. Um, are we standing at a safe place? Yeah, I think we should be good here. All right, so a quick overview, what is going on? So the blue wool bit you can see here in the middle is kind of the centralized elevator shaft. And then we have these pistons. And every time you see these pistons, these are doors. These are floor levels of the elevator. Right, so we got that all hooked up. Most of it wired. Um, I'm working on the white circuit at the moment to wire all the doors together. And yeah, here's the top uh, floor. And then we will have a glass floor right here in the Hall of Gold and make this all look super uh, snazzy. And then you will be able to look down into the crazy redstone wiring that is going on. Here we have um, fast uh, redstone signal transmission using you know, the walls by changing the shape of the wall and then reading out. Um, we can, yeah, transfer signals really fast. And we got one cascade going here and then same cascade on this side. All, uh, yeah, for signal transmission pretty much, sending inputs up and down, you know, in the elevator. Here uh, is the inputs for the control panels, about right here. 
there's another circuit I need to build and yeah it's uh, absolute madness uh, definitely definitely uh, crazy uh, let's see how far we can get this episode I'm trying my hardest I'm grinding it out um, if you're in the groove once you don't want to stop I'm always like that when I start a project I'm like obsessed with finishing it at least uh, to a degree I define as you know a huge step I don't know for here I would say if you finish all the redstone wiring um, we done a huge job already absolute insane by far the most grindy and most difficult project I've been doing this season like even the world eater is a, a yeah cakewalk in comparison oh yeah we got f3b on still i died several times building this thing as well because it's also cramped in you have to jump down and fly down hit walls mobs jump on you so i died three or four times already more than i died building the world eater so you know this is definitely a goat worthy build it's absolutely challenging oh man what you see in front of us here represents the Irishman, Ocean's Eleven, Wolf of Wall Street, Shawshank Redemption, American Gangster, American Psycho and Public Enemies. Yeah, I watched all these movies on the side <laughs> while building that. Uh, if you just add up the movie playtime, you know, we are in the yeah 14, 16 hour range and uh, yeah, that's pretty much a time that passed by since our last clip we recorded non-stop building with small breaks in between and i just then went to bed and i just got up like half an hour ago and finished the last vertical line uh, that was coming up this slime block line here on the side um, <laughs> um what do what can i say i mean i i am tempted to say this is for sure the most complex and most tricky redstone build I ever created and you know right now it's not working even <laughs> there's more obviously we need control panel right uh, on each floor here and I might just build some temporary ones to be able to yeah test the whole thing then we need to rig up the elevator itself which will sit inside of here and I need to pick a wall design here as well so the elevator is actually running so in the elevator shaft but yeah you know I don't know if you can comprehend how difficult and you know long building project this was but i guess you get a bit of an idea if we slowly make our way down here it's endless whenever you think we're done you can see it's repeating pattern though but still yeah you know i mean <laughs> yeah well so yeah we're still going and then there's uh, the coda part below and then there's more that needs to be attached here for the display I mean, it's, yeah, it's just bonkers. <laughs> Boah. You know this feeling when you played Minecraft so long then? That your brain is literally, you, you realize your brain is mush now. You know that feeling? Like when you really know you exhausted yourself mentally, like on, an, on a crazy level, I don't know. Like I felt, felt like that when I was writing some scientific work back in the days or whatever, you know, when you're in the groove and you write and write and write and write and write for hours or paint and then you realize you come back from your crazy grind and then you realize your brain is literally going <laughs> flatlining, man. That's how I felt after after yeah the grind yesterday when i went to bed i literally fell asleep in five seconds <laughs> oh man but yeah Doki doesn't care uh, when i go to bed at 3 a.m in the night uh, now it's seven in the morning again and uh, yeah Doki is about to wake up <laughs> gotta make some breakfast <laughs> holy mother oh that was insane yeah, I'll I'll have breakfast with Brock, uh, Doki now, and then um, I think we start troubleshooting. Oh boy. Oh boy. Ladies and gentlemen, and everybody in between, and yeah, just all of you. Ah, <laughs> uh, it is done. From the last clip you saw, it's yeah exactly about four and a half hours later now <laughs> yeah i'm just going i'm 
going crazy by now. I just spent four hours in a call with, you know, swag and the purple, um, troubleshooting the elevator, you know, trying to make it work, bug fixing everything, make sure, you know, like, I mean, there's, there's hundreds of redstone components in there, redstone blocks. A single missed delay breaks the whole thing. And, you know, it was, uh, I was screen sharing with them and we did it. Another four hours in, we did it. Let's enjoy this glorious moment together, guys. Let's enjoy this glorious moment together. I have no idea if anybody ever built such an elevator in survival. Like, at least, you know, eight stories high. But yeah, here it goes. Obviously, you know, we need to dress it up first. But right now, this is our elevator cabin. And yeah, I used some gray wool and, uh, you know, something just so to, <laughs> to make it work. And yeah, we have actual control panels here. We have a call button and we have a selector, um, you know, floor selector here. And we have this um, on each and every level. Call button, floor selector, call button, floor selector. You get the drift all the way down on all our levels, which are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in total. And here, this directly ties into our staircase here, right? And then you come around and then here would be your first elevator platform. And uh, with this elevator platform, we can get to all the layers. And yeah, why, you know, not just take a ride together, right? So here's the dial. Um, if we set it like this, we should um, be able to ride all the way down. Right? Or did I? Yeah, I think. <laughs> okay, let's just... You know, we press, we go in. Doors close in front of us and the elevator takes off. And here we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at this. You have no idea. This is a triumphant moment. This is just the most satisfying feeling ever. After such a mad grind and running into so many difficulties and issues sitting in my elevator booth you look at that man look how smooth i'm riding down well i'm jumping but <laughs> oh look at it and we're going to the lower floor oh baby the satisfaction and yes Ping pong, you know how satisfying this ping pong is to me right now. I'm absolutely crazy. You know, this thing made me almost broke me. <laughs> and now we can literally just go into it, you know, so that is one function. Obviously, we can select the floor we want to go to and then just ride there. Now, if we want to go all the way up, we would, you know, this is, uh, you know, obviously lowest floor. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And so on, or eight, seven, yeah. And um, now this would send it, um, yeah, all the way up again. But we don't want to do it. Let's say we want to go random to random floor from here on out now, right? And then we could just send it off. Elevator closes its doors, boom, and takes off and goes to the floor we selected. Obviously, it has a call button as well. That's what I want to demonstrate now. So now it's going to our selected floor, boom, and it's going to stop there. Oh, here, yeah, wait, mm, no. one more, I think, and boom, so this is the floor we selected, it would be there, right, and if you're down here and we want to call it now, we just do this, boom, all managed with one button, and everything is instant wired, there's always the same delay, no matter on what, sh what floor you are, you know, that's why it's, uh, it's really hardcore, like, <laughs> uh, it doesn't matter, uh, the reaction time of the elevator will always be the same, it will always be the same smooth experience. And here it comes, you know, we called it, and then we can go up. Obviously, we will have landing platforms on every floor. So if you want to move really fast, you know, and, and I don't know, just quickly fly up, go a floor higher, we can do that too, right? Obviously, in Minecraft, the fastest elevators would be bubble elevators always, but that's boring. 
you know you know you want to use them sure but you know this is a, a you know a center showpiece for our whole base when we have visitors we take him through the elevator you know and then later we can ride down this epic elevator there's glass fronts you know we can look out into the perimeter right down and then here we will have you know i'm gonna build this next now i'm on fire i'm gonna not gonna stop um, i'm gonna build an epic display here that will uh, it, yeah you'll see it all makes sense then we can come down here and then walk out into our you know highway connection systems we have in the in the perimeter get to our farms and stuff bruh and then you know use the elevator to get to our um yeah uh, different setups here we have right for example here with this i have the, the plan here's floor right here's the floor so we come over here and actually there will be a room on top of this you know we have to dig all this out and then there will be a room on top of this and while the thing runs for example you can walk on top of it and then we have some storage here and other stuff uh, maybe some other farming setups that um, correspond with this but you know so that's why this farm is placed like this so it fits with the floor floor layout here you see that is the plan with the whole deal yo and everything will come together like that farms in every area and so on but anyways um yeah let's take a ride uh, to all the way to the top that would be here right later of course i will have signs and stuff and you know uh, this thing will be easier to operate and manage it has also you know obviously green getting stuck in here inspired me a bit <laughs> i thought we need to give hermes a chance to come out of here but then immediately i thought Wait a minute, if Green can operate that, he probably will break it. <laughs> so, actually, this elevator is Green safe. It has a spam protection and that was added specifically because of Green. Like, no other reason, because I would not spam the thing. I would know how to operate it. So, yeah, there is actually a spam protection. Now we can also gauge how fast it will be to make it all the way up. Obviously, there is, you know, that's, that's decent. That's decent. It's not too bad. Obviously, there is elevator. There's, you know, we could use piston flying machines that are faster, elevators that are faster. But then we will really quickly get into the issue that we might start glitching through the floor. With this speed, it might happen here and there. If somebody has a bad connection or so, they could glitch through the floor. It would not be the end of the world. But chances are relatively slim. So that's why, you know, pick the middle ground. It could be faster, but we also want to have it usable. You know, what uses it if it's fast and only works in your single player world, right? Um, if everything goes really bad and the thing starts, you know, um, glitching us through or whatever, we can still put a llama in there and ride it, uh, you know, <laughs> sit on the llama or, you know, put a minecart in there and ride it. That would also work. But yeah, we made it back up again. Can you dig it, man? Holy mother of elevators. I mean, once again, massive, <laughs> massive shout outs to Swag and Purple. Um, yeah, check out their channels. Um, get ready. They will do um, explanation videos for, for elevators and things like that. If you're interested, um, check them out. They're cool dudes. You know, they, they went uh, with me through the motions, you know, uh, like after 20 hours and a creeper jumped down on me and blew up half of the red coder while we were bug fixing. I screamed at the top of my lungs in full rage. <laughs> <laughs> and I could tell Swag was like, oh my god. Uh, I had to even apologize to Swag afterwards and saying sorry for shouting, but I just quickly had to let it out, man. I was not shouting at them, of course. I was just shouting in frustration, like in anger, in agony, like... <laughs> but yeah, you know, that's the thing. When you then finish a design like that, the satisfaction is oh so greater. And now I feel very, very motivated that's why we're gonna build a very unique and clever display down there that will help us distinguish on which floor we actually at. Oh no! <laughs> I was disassembling. I was disassembling the world in here to clear space uh, for you know the display I wanna build there. <laughs> <laughs> unintentionally uh, launch part of the sweepers here I mean that's you know, it's not a problem <laughs> 
Actually, it's maybe even cool if you send them off and then let them just stop when they get unloaded like this. You saw, you see, half of it took off the area that was loaded by the player. Obviously, it looks that it is loaded, but it's Bobby, right? I still have the 16 chunk render distance. It's just an optical illusion that we can see everything. And if I don't go there, those areas will not be updated. <laughs> well, it's actually hilarious. Launch part of the world either. Thank God, and it launched some TNT bit upstairs. But technically nothing bad would have happened. I mean, the stopper block is in on the opposite side of the world either. And yeah, nothing. It would be in a good height. Nothing would have been bombed or so. <laughs> but yeah, that's just fitting. I guess leaves me a little bit less to clear up here. Um, yeah, we just let them run and eventually they will stop somewhere in the perimeter. Then we can clean them up later. Hey, the 255th wandering trader that showed up. Let's see, maybe you finally got something mm -hmm. useful. Um, I got a lot of leads now, all of a sudden. Okay, let's see. Yeah, trash. <laughs> all right. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's, let's clean up here a bit. <laughs> all right. Pretty much the redstone bit of the display is done. And it's quite interesting. It's a real-time display, always showing the elevator's position. So, you know, we can press the call button here. Call the elevator down and then you should see, corresponding to where the elevator is, it starts there now, here, um, you know, different signals will come in. Yeah, check it out. Now, elevator makes it a floor lower. Boom. You see, things switching around there. And that will always give us a good overview where the elevator actually is. And right now it doesn't make much sense how things uh, move around here. But yeah, it's a very unique and specific 7 segment display. It was a really cool idea I think we had there implementing this bad boy. And let's see what it does. Yeah, now the elevator is at the ground floor. So in theory when the elevator is back down here on ground floor, this should now display a 1. <laughs> Alright, so yeah, now we need to put more work in that uh, that actually becomes readable. <laughs> yeah, now it's readable. That clearly looks like a 1, written out in water. <laughs> we have a really cool system here, um, you know, there is waterlogged stairs all the way around and it's also lit up nicely and depending on where the elevator is we lift and raise certain stairs and let water flow or not from all the waterlogged stairs that are sitting all the way around and this way we actually have a liquid real-time water display <laughs> i mean you know i told you we're going all out with this bad boy and this thing is the icing on the cake i love it and yeah, I just gave you the wrong information though, uh, according to what it should display. A one, it's displaying now because the elevator is actually all the way up. So the idea is we're going downwards into the vault. So this is, you know, lower level one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and so on until level eight. So in the elevator is at the lowest level, it should display eight. And yeah, now let's just, you know, watch this amazing thing in full action. Can't believe it. Pulled it off. Boom, I'm calling the elevator. And now we just sit back and watch this display, all right? So the elevator is moving. And now, real time, two, it's on level two. Elevator reaching level three. Boom, level three. Elevator reaching level four soon. Oh, baby. Four. <laughs> it's so satisfying. How satisfying is this? How cool is this display? Really quick and super nice readability with the water. Um, had this idea late night when we were hanging out, working on the elevator and thinking it would be cool if you have a display. Where do we put it? And then, you know, one thing led to another and all of a sudden we had this thing. <laughs> it's epic, man. Oh, baby. You know, yeah. Uh, you know, this ding dong is the most satisfying sound I've ever heard in my life. I, I tell you, and you know, one thing's for sure. I thought about a name for this thing. 
So Swagger, right, helped uh, working on that. And Swagger was actually there when I was shortly in front of giving up and literally screaming <laughs> out of frustration. So I felt that was a real bonding experience. We are brothers now, <laughs> Swag and I. <laughs> so this is the Swagger waiter. Uh, sorry, Purple, you know. I know you did a lot of work with it too. Maybe we call it the purple swagger waiter. Uh, how about that? And yeah, uh, the idea of this display is, of course, you will be able to see it from every floor and also while you're actually riding the elevator. Um, for the uh, in-between floor designs here, we will always have glass here. So you're riding the elevator and you will be able to look down and see this display from any position. And yeah, um, we can call the elevator up, for example, right? And then we can look from on top here. Even from on top here, it has really great readability. Um, so yeah, elevator is running seven. You know, and, and the cool thing is, everything in this elevator is real time. <coughs> you know, no delay. When the elevator hits floor six, boom, the display immediately switches. And same goes for all the button uh, signals and. You know, so it's really, really nice. And see, that's what you get when you ask some of the best door builders out there to, you know, try something new. And they took this challenge by storm and sent me into absolute grind hell. <laughs> and elevator arriving. Boom. Did you hear that? Bing bong. As soon as the elevator arrives here, we switch to display one. And the doors open, right? You have to imagine here there will be, of course glass doors in front of the elevator and now they're you know open and um, all the others are closed and they only open when the elevator is there so you can see for example one floor lower those are closed right four high doors and yeah holy moly that was a challenging episode i want to tell you a little story um, when we, before we end the episode <laughs> look at this thing this felt like actually doing honest work it's real work you sit here you have to use your brain you, you have to focus it's real work and sometimes you know these days there's always you know you know i'm doing this for a long time but there's always these trending topics um on the youtubes right and at the moment it's uh, people showing their hardcore worlds there's a lot of hardcore players out there that do pretty amazing stuff and a lot of them also fully stream their hardcore adventures to make sure people understand, okay, I'm doing this fully legit here. But um, recently I also came across a lot of people that are trying to jump on this hype train. And yeah, let's say from one episode to the other, they partially pull incredible feats. Let's leave it there. I'm just saying very incredible feats. And partially it's very obvious how incredible those feats are, if you know what I mean. And... After you put so much work into this and ground it out, sometimes it can be annoying then when you know, you know, in certain cases, uh, corners were cut. I'm not, you know, saying people are cheating. <coughs> and then people call him, wow, I can't believe how much education work you put in. And you know for a fact it was not honest work. And sometimes it gets to you, even after all these years. So the other day on Twitter, I ranted about that a little bit. So always keep that in mind, guys. Um, YouTube, it's about entertainment and that's the most important thing. But you should still respect the honest grind. I know these days people don't do that that much anymore. Um, but this was a solid piece of work. <laughs> this took long. And it was a lot of fun to make this, to take this challenge on. So with that said, always keep that in mind. If you want to be GOAT, you really got to grind. <laughs> See you in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching. I am out. Bye bye.